Molecular compounds are those in which the atoms of elements join together by covalent bonds. Therefore, the chemical formula of a covalent bonded compound represents the number and type of atoms in a molecule. For ionic compounds, we use Roman numerals to represent the positive charge of a cation with multiple charges. However, in a molecule, we have neutral atoms bonded together. So we use prefixes in the name to indicate the number of atoms of an element in a single molecule. For the chemical formula, the prefixes indicate the subscript for the element. Okay, for example, to name a chemical compound that is molecular, name the first element in the formula, name the second element in the formula, and change the ending to I to E. We're going to use prefixes to indicate the number of atoms of each element that are present in the compound. You can see these prefixes to the left in the data table. Now, if the prefix ends in A or O, and we're going to use it with oxide, we're going to drop the A and O from the prefix. Okay, a couple things to note. If there's only one atom of the first element in the formula, do not use a prefix. However, a prefix is always needed for the second element's name. Okay, here are some examples. Let's take a look. All right. SO2, okay, the name of the first element is sulfur. The name of the second element is oxygen. And we're going to change the end name to IDE. There's one sulfur, so we do not need the prefix. But there's two oxygens, so we need a prefix in front of the oxide. And the prefix for two is di. So it's sulfur dioxide. And N2O. Okay, first element is nitrogen. Second element is oxygen oxygen again. So we're gonna say oxide. Okay. First element has two nitrogens, so we're gonna say dinitrogen. The second element is gonna be monoxide because the second element must have a prefix. Okay, NO2. This one will be nitrogen. And there's two oxygens, so it will be dioxide. Remember, we do not need a prefix for the first element if there's only one. So the next one, CCl4, is going to be carbon. And there's four chlorines, so it's tetrachloride. Cl2O7. Two chlorines, I need di, dichlorine. Seven oxygens, so I need hepta. Now we're going to drop the A and say heptoxide because it's with oxygen. Next one is phosphorus. Three chlorines makes it trichloride. Next one, SF6, sulfur. Six is hexafluoride. Then we have tri for three silicons, tri-silicon, and four nitrogens would be tetra nitride. Now we're going to go the other direction. We're going to go to our next slide and we're going to have names and use the name to write the chemical formula. Remember the prefix represents the number of atoms of that particular element. So the prefix will become our subscript in our formula. So nitrogen dioxide. 
there's no prefix in term of nitrogen, so it's just N for one nitrogen. Dioxide means two oxygens. So the di becomes a subscript of two for oxygen, so it would be NO2. Diphosphorus pentaoxide. So we need phosphorus and we need two of them. Pent means five, so I need five oxygens. Xenon tetrafluoride. Xenon, there's only one of them because there's no prefix. Tetra means uh, four, so fluoride is fluorine, so four fluorines. XEF4. Sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur is S. Fluorine is F. Hexa means six, so SF6. Carbon tetrachloride. Carbon. CL for chlorine, there are four chlorines for tetra, so CCl4. Dinitrogen tetraoxide, we're going to have nitrogen. Dinitrogen means two nitrogens. Tetraoxide means four oxygens, N2O4. And then dihydrogen. H2 monoxide, O, commonly called water. And this is our tutorial for writing and naming chemical formulas for organic compounds. Not organic compounds, molecular compounds.